Praise the Lord, my daily Bible study friends. If you have never received that most precious of gifts from God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues, today may very well be your day. We're going to study that aspect of our relationship with God over the next few days. So stay tuned. If you're interested in receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, today you'll learn how that's done. God bless you. Let's get started. The most important part of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost is obedience. John 14, 23 through 24, Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come into him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the words which ye hear are not mine, but the Father which sent me. Did you see that part where he said, if a man love me, he will keep my words? And then he said, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Obedience is the first part of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But obedience, obedience to what? What shall I be obedient to? Well, let's have a look at it. Well, this question was asked on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, 37 through 39. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Well, there's your question. What shall I do? What shall I be obedient to? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. For the promise, here it is, a promise. When you repent, and when you're baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, there is a promise out there for you. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And notice the promise did not stop at the days of the apostles. The Bible says, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all. Can anybody say all, all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call? Please don't try to tell me that this stopped in the days of the apostles because it's simply a lie. It is available for you today, and it is available for those who are obedient to the scriptures. What shall I do? You shall repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of those sins, and you will receive, you shall receive the Holy Ghost for the promise. The promise is still out there, folks. All you have to do is repent and believe the gospel, which involves being baptized in the name of Jesus. But you say, how shall I know that I have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Well, did you know the Bible even gives you the answer to that question? And here it is. In Acts, the 10th chapter, the 44th verse, the Bible says, And while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Amen. How do you know you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Well, this is a sign that you received the Holy Ghost. According to Mark 16 and 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. Now, there are other signs, but the sign of receiving the Holy Ghost, just like the apostles saw it when Cornelius' house in Acts the 10th chapter, was they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Now, before I give you some practical tips, real tips, practical tips about how to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to confirm what I'm about to say in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, 1 Corinthians 14, 14, 1 Corinthians 14 and 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. How is this, or how be it, in the spirit he speaketh mysteries? And also, Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 14 and 14. 
Although Paul could have spoken as many as four languages, he also said this, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. When he prayed in the unknown tongue, even he did not understand what he was saying. That's very important to consider when carrying or trying to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you why. When Richard Ramirez shared with me the truth about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that speaking in other tongues would be a tongue I do not physically understand, I was uh, not going to speak in tongues because I thought I could say something offensive, maybe even cuss out God and not even know it. So therefore, I would not speak in other tongues. But when he showed me these scriptures that even the Apostle Paul said, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful, I realize that if I'm speaking in an unknown tongue, I'm speaking not unto men, but unto God, even though nobody understands it. So don't be afraid. As a matter of fact, you may begin to praise God and worship him and say, Jesus, I love you and those sort of things. But there might be a time while you're saying those things that you will speak a word that you do not understand. Unfortunately, because of a lack of understanding, many people stop at that moment and gather themselves together and begin on with the I love you Jesus type of thing. What you need to do is realize that when you do not understand what you're saying, that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In other words, when it sounds odd and strange, even babyish or childlike, when you cannot understand what you're saying, that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you can understand what you're saying when you pray, if you understand every word of what you're saying while you pray, that is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I repeat, that's not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. For the Bible says, that the Holy Ghost will be an unknown tongue. He that speaketh unto God speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. If I pray in an unknown tongue, it is my spirit that prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. And I pray that you will tell me when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with help from this simple lesson. And I will have more to say about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, so please tune in. Until then, God bless you and keep you, and may God fill each one of you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost so that you will be ready for the second coming of Christ. Amen.